Glasswire is the ultimate firewall and network monitoring software. Check it out at the link below. What's up guys, CB Money here, back with another video and when it comes to the GPU market, we've all asked the question, just how much does VRAM actually affect your FPS and if you were to drop down to a lower VRAM skew, are you losing out in performance? And well today, we're going to go ahead and at least try to answer that exact question. However, with that being said, in recent years, the GPU market has seen less and less split cards. For example, back in the days of this guy, the 7770 and I guess even older 7850 for example, these guys were seeing a 2 gig version, a 1 gig version, and heck, maybe even a 512 gig version on quite older cards. Whereas today's market, you kind of have one card. And that's basically it when it comes to different VRAM configurations. There are a couple additions out there, which we'll touch on in just a moment. But for most of the part, most of the video cards on the market today are kind of, well, one size and that is about it. But I definitely remember when I was building my first computer, I had the option between a one gigabyte card and a four gigabyte card. And I also too asked the exact same question. Was I losing out in performance by choosing the lower end one gigabyte card? Did I really miss out that much? Now for today's testing, well, we're going to find out exactly that question. Now we grabbed ourselves the Radeon 7850, which isn't exactly this card, but we do have the box sitting around here of the 7850. I've been having it for quite a few years. I picked it up, one of the first video cards I ever bought. It's up here somewhere, trust me, I don't know where it's gone, but maybe I'll punch in on the screen somewhere. Wherever it is, we grabbed that. That is the card that I've been having here and there for just random testing for the past few years, and this is the 2 gigabyte edition. However, my friend also too has the exact same 7850 in a 1 gigabyte configuration. Now, yes, to be clear, they're by no means the super latest cards, and they're actually relatively old, but the question can still be easily answered on these older cards, as everything on them is exactly the same apart from the VRAM configuration. Now put these guys on my 7700K test bench with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and hit them with all our standard tests and I also do made sure that the core speeds were identical and I guess also to the memory. So memory clock, core speed, everything about the cards and also to the PC was identical except for the VRAM which really helps to eliminate any other variables in these types of tests. Everything was identical from run to run apart from the VRAM in the two different video cards. Now I'm sure there's going to be someone out there saying, why didn't I go ahead and use a GTX 1060? There's a 6 gig model and a 3 gig model. Well, actually you'd be wrong for using the 1060 because the 1060 actually comes in not only two VRAM configurations, but also to the core itself is different between 6 gigs and also to 3 gigabytes. So for me to use a 1060 would be an unfair test because one would have a better core processor than the other because well, 1060 6 gig has more processing power than the 3 gigabyte edition. So in the case of a 1060, the performance gap is more of the actual core itself rather than the VRAM. And also to answering question before it even comes up with someone complaining about the fact that this is an unfair test and the 7850 should never be paired up with the 7700k and blah 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 this test is unfair no one's ever going to run them and the answer is yeah no one's ever going to run these kind of tests but the question can still be answered whether we're looking at brand new cards with brand new hardware or older cards with older hardware because we can easily scale up these results because, well, they're going to be basically the same, especially because, well, there's not really that much a difference when you rule all the other variables out. So, again, the point of this video is strictly to see if you have two identical cards, one with more VRAM, one with less VRAM, will you see a performance different? Age of the components don't matter, whether there's a bottleneck doesn't matter, because the processing power is exactly the same. So now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the numbers that we did run here today. So jumping into our gaming tests, FPS is definitely one thing we're going to take a look and kicking things off we see... Hang on a second, we actually see different performance? If we go ahead and take a look at the 2GB edition card versus 1GB, we see that my card actually performs slightly better, about 5-7 to seven FPS on average better, than its lower end 1GB card variant. And this was really surprising to me. Honestly, I thought we would see identical performance, but it turns out, thanks to the fact that a lot of modern games need a fair bit of VRAM to run, thanks to the fact that they're doing 100 million things at once, 
It turns out that more VRAM actually allows for more things to be stored in the VRAM. Obviously more VRAM can do that, allowing the card to perform ever so slightly better. No, it wasn't noticeable in day-to-day -day usage and day-to-day -day gaming, but it was definitely measurable in that 5 to 7 FPS depending on what game it was. And it was really cool to see that, in fact, yes, we were getting better performance. So I dug a little bit deeper and again, it turns out a lot of these games are actually taking advantage of the more VRAM, being able to cache all the stuff in there, and thus better performance was enabled. Now that being said, when we jumped into other things such as video editing, day-to-day -day operations, there was really no difference between the two, mainly because the core of the GPU itself was dictating the performance there. However, if you are doing something VRAM intensive that needs a lot of VRAM, obviously adding more VRAM will give you better performance. Now if you're thinking, okay then, if I got 8 gigs of VRAM on my GTX whatever card or AMD whatever card, and if I get a 16 gig version for example, I would see better performance, well the answer is actually no. because. We looking at such low VRAM cards, so 1GB and 2GB, if we were to get something, say, a 4GB edition, we wouldn't be seeing as big difference. Now, obviously, no, there isn't a 4GB edition card. However, if we do kind of make some guesstimations right here, we would probably see maybe slightly better performance than the 1 and 2GB card, but where we would start to max out is thanks to the core itself. Sure, we could pair up 16 gigs of VRAM on a card like this, but honestly, we wouldn't see the benefit of the 16 gigs of VRAM because the GPU core itself couldn't actually process enough to really take advantage of all 16 gigs. FPS is almost always dictated by the actual core itself, so the 7850 core paired with 20 gigs of VRAM, or the 12 I just mentioned, really wouldn't be seeing that much more performance, and that can be extrapolated up to much bigger variants. Again, for example, a 1080 Ti with however much video RAM it has compared to, say, double, we really wouldn't see that much of a difference because, for example, a 1080 Ti already has so much VRAM on it that it really doesn't matter either way. Sure, you could probably get a little tiny few more frames out of it, but honestly, it wouldn't be worth putting that much VRAM on it, and the core itself would start to become, I guess, a bottleneck rather than the VRAM itself. However, with that being said, a lot of manufacturers, even on older cards, still put a lot of design and effort into the actual, well, design that goes into it, so they're usually pairing up the correct amount of VRAM for what the GPU can achieve, so there's really not that much point there, but TLDR time of this video. With all the variables aside, so same GPU, same CPU, everything the same, the only thing that changes from run to run is the VRAM, is there a difference? Well, actually surprisingly enough, yes, but there's only a difference when you have such low amounts of VRAMs, for example, 1 and 2 gigabytes. If you were to look at something like 3, 4, 5 and 6 gigabytes, you wouldn't really be seeing that much of a difference. Unfortunately, I can't run those tests because unlike a PC, you can't just slot in more RAM and remove RAM out of a video card, so you kind of have to wait till manufacturers make a video card with more or less RAM, but the difference is very, very small, and most likely when you get into the higher end video cards, there will be no difference at all, because the core itself is as running flat out, the VRAM is plenty to go with the core, and overall you're getting a good gaming experience. You'll also do want to keep in mind that whilst VRAM does make a slight difference, especially in today's video card market, there's a lot more at play than just different VRAMs. For example, again, the 1060 versus the 1060 3GB and 6GB, you're going to be seeing a difference in the core processor giving you different performance. It's not only the RAM in today's market that is making difference in the performance front. And a lot of new games these days really want more than 1 and 2 gigs of VRAM, which is what we only had here today. But let me know down in that comment section, how much VRAM do you run in your system? Would you like more or do you think you've got enough for the job? Let me know down below. If you want to pick up a 7850 or even a 7770 that I've been waving around here, you can find them linked all down in that description box. Thanks all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.